Welcome back to Blackjack. As you can see, we're recording somewhere a little differently today. I still can't get rid of that loud humming. I don't know what it is. It's there, uh, not only here, although here it would make sense because I'm sitting directly under some heaters. Um, I can't the, like a grocery store. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of that humming, so if anyone can give me a hand with that. Uh, it's the same hum as last time, so I have no idea. Um, if I get, like, stopped or told that I can't record here or anything like that, then I'll just wrap up tomorrow, because uh, I'm going to be at work tomorrow, and I can just go up to the break room and record. Um, I get there a little bit early anyway, so why not use that time for something constructive. Uh, still don't have internet at home, as you can tell, because it's impossible. Like, I have come up against every roadblock I can possibly find. I mean, almost every internet service out there has been anti-net neutrality. And, you know, I shouldn't be forced to compromise my morals for internet. But I also shouldn't be forced to compromise my bank book for internet. Like, who charges $60 a month for internet access for the shitty kind? Who? Oh. Assholes, that's who. Uh, and then, like, every service I can find that's pro-neutrality doesn't operate in my area or is Frontier, who actually, I realize, I've never checked. I've never checked what their stance is on that. All I know is that they are a bunch of dickheads. They just, uh, they raised my rates continuously. They gave me crappy service, and I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but when... When your internet is just dropping all the time and being incredibly slow until the repair person gets to your house, when in which case it works perfectly fine every single time, that's a little bit more than a coincidence. So, anyway, okay, Ultron vs. Sigma, I don't know much about either of these characters. Um, Uh, I guess, well, all I know is it's been a really requested one, and they've said that this season is where they get into all the really requested battles, so... Uh, I don't know if that means next season they're going to be doing a little more radical. Uh, they said that 103, this is going to be 101 right here, so we're going to get another one, and then they're gonna, we're going to get the season finale. They said 103 is going to be their enormously huge, most requested battle. So what I'm thinking um, is that it's either Thanos versus Darkseid or um, some of the other really, really big ones that I've seen requested. Uh, Asura versus Broly is another one, but I think they probably would have put the stop on that um, until the new Broly movie comes out. Uh, whew. Oh, golly. Uh, oh. The other one. It's not. It's not Dark Side, but it's someone like Dark Side. Uh. Anyway. Meh. Okay. Let's just start on this. Humans fear what they don't understand, especially when it comes to the infinite potential of artificial intelligence. Like Ultron, Marvel's mechanical mass I have a feeling it's and be Sigma, a, a general of genocide okay. from Mega what Man. What happened to his chin? He's it looks like a butt chin. It was and cut it's off. our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. <laughs> Hank Pym was a founding member of the Avengers, the creator of the revolutionary Pym particles, and designated scientist supreme by eternity. He was also the quote-unquote father of one of the greatest mass murderers Hold on. So, they're sorcerers supreme. They're scientists supreme. What else is there? I'd really like to know that. Like, can somebody who's big into Marvel tell me that? The universe. Guess which one he's most remembered for? Eager to push the boundaries of science, Hank constructed an artificial intelligence which could learn and evolve on its own, modeling it on his own brain patterns. Just one problem. At the time, Hank was pretty effed up and just a few years from going full on Looney Tunes. Maybe yeah. not the best time to base an AI off your mind, but still, Hank's project was a success. Which kind of Ultron goes to had been born. Known for, which is a life your destruction is inevitable. 
Hang on, Wiz. And let Tony and Not Hulk created Ultron. Not Hulk. <laughs> in the movies, sure, but it was Hank in the primary source material, the comics. Well, he really knocked it out Daddy. of the park. Ultron's <laughs> super smart brain evolved past Hank's ability to cope. Basically skipping over the innocent kid phase and straight to, screw you, Dad, you'll never understand. I yeah. mean, you'd know a lot about that. <laughs> you, Wiz, you'll never understand. Because Ultron's <laughs> consciousness was based off Hank's struggling bipolar one, he inherited his creator's issues huh. and magnified them into absurdity. With a new thirst That's for power, cool. coupled with cool. a severe inferiority complex, Ultron escaped the lab, bent on destroying his father, the Avengers, and basically all organic life. And the first step was As upgrading his trash can of a body into a sleek new- Positing all common attributes into one and excluding version specific capabilities. Well, can he, like, transfer into different bodies? Well, then again, Bison can do that, and they didn't let him do that. Adamantium <laughs> one! The same kind of metal used for Wolverine's skeleton chrome job. But you may be wondering, how's he gonna walk around if his entire oh, body is made of adamantium? Bodies. Even Thor has a hard time bending that stuff. And he- Destroy planets! Ultron thought of that and created an answer. His molecular rearranger allows him to mold and shape his body any way he likes. Human he form. can manipulate his adamant himself to move around or transform into blades, spikes, and explosions, apparently. Specifically, he can expend his body through a blast of energy force. The okay, molecular then. rearranger is also a repair tool on the off chance he is damaged. He's also got a power siphon to absorb energy, jet boosters for flight, nanobot antibodies, and a fusion reactor powering the whole package. And if you're a death robot who's about to challenge all the Avengers to a fight, oh, you're gonna need more than just some fancy doodads to pull it off. Yeah. He possesses super strength and super speed, and he can manipulate ionic energy. An ion is an atom or molecule with an electric charge, and this charge is created when it loses Lasers, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Ultron can fire beams of ionic oh, energy from his eyes. I know, and... I know. You set Mega Man up with a villain who couldn't, uh, well, an opponent. I mean, he was up against Astro Boy, so not a villain. You set Mega Man up with an opponent he couldn't beat, so they could go to bits, and you could pick up his Mega Buster. Is that right, Wiz? Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're doing? I am so glad there's nobody else out here right now. Hands, <laughs> and can even use it to create force fields. He also wields an encephalo ray, which allows him to read and control minds, erase memories, and even put you into a coma with a single hit. Ah, syphilis ray, huh? That's gotta be hard to get rid of. <laughs> Too true. Also, Ultron's artificial you intelligence know. isn't bound to any one physical body. Should he be destroyed, he can transfer his consciousness oh into God. another machine to survive. And boy, does he have a lot of drones on hand just for that. Like the giant yeah. Ultron 7, or the Christmas-themed Santatron! <laughs> and who could forget Ultron 15, the alcoholic one! Part robot, all fun! While most of these drones are relatively fragile compared to his own adamantium <laughs> shell, Ultron has a veritable army on his hands, all of which are extensions- Hang on, so... Can he only go into these drones? Because obviously they're going to be doing that here. Um, even though they said that they're uh, just using a composite of his, uh, like, not version specifics. ...of his will that he commands simultaneously. Oh, he's conquered seriously. the whole world with these guys and Literally two different future army. timelines. He's humiliated heavy hitters like Iron Man, Wonder Man, and Thor, flown across the entire galaxy just for fun, and tanked hits from Mjolnir like they were nothing. Plus, he's hella smart. I mean, Hank is scientist supreme, right? And Ultron was designed to grow smarter than him, so that must make him scientist ultra supreme with expertise. He even assimilated a techno-organic race known as the Phalanx, and then used them to conquer the entire Kree Empire. This empire spans the Greater Magellanic Cloud, Ooh. a real-life satellite galaxy near to our own Milky Way. It's made up of a thousand planets across a diameter of 14,000 light years, and Ultron conquered all of them in just a couple hours. Hang on, and it's over a thousand planets, but it's over that great of a distance? That is super spread out. This Damn, serious. that's some dedication. I can't even bother to finish conquering all the anthills outside my shack. With all that power and intelligence, Ultron was able to defeat the time-traveling warlord Kang, who pulled an army of superheroes across time to fight for him. 
Kang lost so many times that the universe started to collapse from how many people he was time hopping to fight Ultron. Man, is there anything that can stop this robot? Yes. Well, sufficient heat can melt his internal circuitry, his adamantium is vulnerable to anti-metal, and he is frequently defeated by computer viruses that can attack his AI directly. He also never really got over the crazy he inherited from Hank. He once self-destructed in utter disbelief after reading the phrase, Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, he's so murder-happy that just the thought of not killing people drove him to suicide. Damn, <laughs> guy's got problems. No kidding, he wants to turn Hank's wife into a robot bride for himself. Hey, pretty mama. And once merged with Hank for a cross-galaxy road trip, slaughtering billions just for fun. Whoa, wait, what was that bit about sex botting his mom? There aren't enough pin particles in the world to shrink Ultron's issues, but to be honest, that's probably what makes him so incredibly deadly. But like the man said, what doesn't kill me? So wait, he got a bipolar guy's Just issues, but he's a sociopath. That doesn't make sense. In the year 21, <laughs> <coughs> humanity well, experienced a golden age of technology, thing. all thanks to the discovery and replication of a certain blue android that could think and feel like a human. These replicated androids, or reploids, were mass-produced and used at all levels of society. Wow, that sounds amazing! Like it could have no possible <laughs> negative repercussions at all! Unfortunately, <laughs> there it is. Instances of crime involving reploids began to increase. Something seemed to be infecting them, turning these reploids into violent mavericks who needed to be stopped. So, Dr. Kane, the guy that started this reploid shindig in the first place, created a robot so badass that it could hunt mavericks without getting infected himself. This reploid was named Sigma. Commander Sigma led the newly formed Maverick Hunters like hey, an elite police force. Minus two years. Looks like the forbidden lurk time of Buzz Lightyear and Zerg. <laughs> he kind of does. With a butt chin that's been cut off. Under his leadership skills, the number of overall casualties dropped to a whopping zero. Things were going great. Well, until they found a mysterious red maverick in an abandoned laboratory who started eating maverick hunter ass for breakfast. Oh, wait, that, that didn't come out right. How does he... Sigma fought the How fight of his life. And though he technically won, his victory was far more pyrrhic than he or the rest of the world could ever have imagined. So this red guy was called Zero, and turns out the thing infecting reploids in turn... Ah, we all know what that did. <laughs> ...them into Mavericks was a virus leaking from Zero's stasis pod. That also didn't sound right. A final gift from that dastardly Dr. Wily. Oh, dear God, that thing is hard on a hangover. Fortunately, Sigma was designed to fight off such a virus. Unfortunately, this actually just made things worse. Yeah. Instead of bending Sigma to its violent will, the virus merged with his programming, becoming one with his body and mind. Together, they both became stronger than before, with a whole new outlook on the world. Sigma began to look at humankind as detrimental to reploid evolution, oh, holding yeah. back their full potential. Yeah, yeah, the big, strong metal people hate the dumb <laughs> flesh bags, blah, blah. I hear it from you every time at the bar, Wiz. I... when was the last time I went to a bar? You don't remember? Um, uh, no. Mission accomplished. Sigma gathered an army of Mavericks, and when the time was right, his invasion began. But to pull it off, he needed some bitch and robo weapons. Sigma's favorite is his totally not copyrighted beam sword, but he also likes tearing through bots with his. You know, there's gotta be energy surge that predate lightsabers. Do any sci-fi people know about energy surge that predate lightsabers? You know, let me know. Let me know. Sigma blade. Gotta find out about that. Scythe and the I'm not compensating for anything size Sigma blade. He also wields an energy rifle, flamethrower, and a giant energy cannon. For extra defense, he has a shield that can be tossed around the room like a boomerang. And hey, look, he's like a Robo Wolverine. Only the metal's on the outside. Well, and, and inside. With all these weapons and an army at his back, Sigma's operation was nearly successful. <laughs> However, he was halted by the original Badly. android Dr. Kane found all those years ago. Oh, of course, it's on Mega Man X. But Sigma just kept coming back. Over and over and over and... Wait a minute, is that a new villain? 
Oh, never mind. He's just being controlled by Sigma. How <laughs> okay. the hell does he keep coming back? How many lives does this guy have? Well, All Sigma's body is just a shell. The true essence of Sigma lies in the merged and sentient Sigma virus. Ooh. This virus can infect other robotic bodies, turning other Reploids maverick or even completely transferring his consciousness. Mm. He's even built several enormous bodies just for this. These extra okay, robo the shells thing. have all sorts of unique That's abilities. Right. They can fly, teleport around, make walls of electricity, create force fields, shoot a giant laser beam of death, or make some blue balls. Ah, oh, that's rough, buddy. I've been there. Also, each of Sigma's <laughs> Mavericks possess their own abilities that are... Hey, hey, look, Wiz! They're all animals! That one's a penguin, and that's an octopus, and that one's a... Uh, Kwanger! Yeah! Kwangers are... Uh, what the f*** is a Kwanger? It's just a messed up romanization of Kuwagata, the Japanese word for stag beetle. Yeah, I oh, guess Kwanger okay. sounds more badass. With these forces, <laughs> Sigma waged war with humanity for many, many years. He's battled top-tier Maverick Hunters like X, Axel, and even that Zero guy. Wait, what's Guns N' Roses doing here? Zero once survived an impact that broke apart the Eurasia space colony, which, when its pieces landed on Earth, created an explosion equal to at least 100 teratons of TNT. And Sigma is powerful yeah. enough to take out Zero in a single hit. Damn. Nice. But Sigma's also okay, managed see, to- Take out in a single hit is different than- Hurt, which is what the description on the side had Damage said. X, who once channeled enough energy through his body to destroy all of Japan. Suck it, Godzilla. And many of Sigma's bodies <laughs> could tank attacks from take both out X and Zero too. without much issue. And That's impressive, Russia. considering X fought the General, whose body was tough enough to block a laser capable of destroying the Earth. The minimum amount of energy necessary to destroy a planet is known as its gravitational binding energy which, in the case of Earth, is equivalent to a little over 63 sextillion tons of TNT. That's 22 zeros! The, the number, not the robot. Plus, he's fast <laughs> enough to keep up with zero! Or both. Actual robot, not the number, who dodged Optic Sunflower's beam of sunlight! Actually, Sigma's likely even faster. Recall that Reploids like X, Zero, and Sigma were designed to be superior in every way to classic-era robots like Mega Man. That same Mega Man fought Duo, a space robot capable of flying between Saturn and the Earth within 35 seconds. The only thing that could stop Sigma was the Mother Elf antivirus program. But if you don't take out the squishy computery center, he'll always come back. So long as Sigma's still kicking, the dream of a world where humans and robots coexist is doomed to be a nightmare. The time has come to prove your mettle against me. This fight will decide the fate of all Reploids! <laughs> I've heard that voice before. Who is that? Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, let us help you program your next meal. No. I'm already at the By grocery store. By now, you've story. probably heard of Blue Apron, bullshit. the leading... Okay. Honestly, it kind of sounds like Sigma has the upper hand because it sounds like he could infect either Ultron himself or the Ultron drones. But I don't remember if it said that Ultron can, like, how could he stand up to his own drugs? Did he just end them weaker so that he could overpower them? Or, you know, in case of something like this happening? Uh, whew. Uh, I don't know. Um, Ultron has that, like, thing that takes its flesh, but that's not gonna come in handy at all. So, it's like one person out here, and she's getting the courage. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with Sigma here, just because of that. Um, they can both take backup bodies. Uh, but Sigma can, like, control, uh, other robots, and not just in a leadership sense, although he has that too. Uh, Ultron just has his drones, which are basically all gonna think like him, too. And I did see the preview for it, uh, their armies are going at it at the beginning, so, okay, let's... Cliche. 
you in what army? I'm to open my eyes for sound effect. <laughs> oh, I think it all mine. I remember they said they they all really like that shot. <laughs> It does nothing. Oh, I do like that. I think I had a tingle. No actual tingle. Okay. Okay, that's not gonna do much. No way to delusion. You're all just puppets on the streets. Hey, you can wipe out that one body. You'll tear out your surface and bathe in your oil. You <laughs> bathe in your oil, yeah, there you go. Tear you the circuits, that's what he said, okay. Just got that a second late. Uh, he took his plan first, though. Just possess him already. What god? Lucky for me, I'm my own best back. I can Okay, what is that thing? That's like another drone? Hey, he's, he's a fire in his laser. Out of it? So he can. So how? How can he do that? I don't remember them saying that he could. Yes, that's one way to make friends. Despite Sigma's geniusness and ferocity, he was fairly outclassed by Ultron's talents. Sigma could scale to the general who took a face full of 63 sextillion tons of TNT, but Ultron can withstand hits from Thor and his hammer, and we all know how awesome that thing is. When Thor fought so Thor and the God <laughs> Butcher, their battle created shockwaves powerful enough to shatter planets thousands of miles away. This could only be possible with a force equivalent to 682 septillion tons of TNT. Over 10,000 times stronger than anything Sigma could survive. Uh, wouldn't that mean that everything around them would have been wiped out too? What do you mean? Okay. Okay. Hey. And not only has Ultron frequently smacked Thor around like a toddler, Thor has had a really hard time trying to damage Ultron's adamantium armor, so Sigma's weapons couldn't either. In terms of speed, Ultron flew across the galaxy in several months, putting him roughly 200,000 times the speed of light. That's leagues faster than Sigma, even if we scale him to Duo, who is 114 okay. times light speed. Okay, what is that, what is that spelling there? Si- an And frankly, scaling to Duo through Mega Man in the first place is a bit capricious, as Duo didn't use his full potential in their fight. Huh. Even with all that, it really didn't matter who could punch harder or move faster, because the real fight was between the Ultron AI and the Sigma virus. Yeah. Right, and while infection and possession was kind of the Sigma virus's thing, Ultron's AI was far more advanced. 
Recall how he enslaved an entire techno-organic race to the point where he used them to conquer an empire spanning a whole satellite galaxy. Uh, yeah, the Phalanx are like Marvel's version of the Borg. Hell, that means Ultron basically sigma a whole mm. race of sigmas. It also helps that Ultron is as smart or smarter than Hank, the scientist supreme. Hanks even admitted as much, and he's smart enough to construct an infinitely sized mansion in a higher dimension of existence. Okay. Sigma was certainly a ruthless yeah, steamer, but nowhere nature. near that level. Boom. The only I'm time Ultron was ever effort. defeated by a virus was one specifically designed to bypass his defenses and oh. leave him vulnerable to attack from the future and a oh, bunch of other complicated that. stuff. Sigma was a tenacious one, virus. but Ultron was the stronger android, the tougher villain, and the deadlier virus. It wasn't long before Ultron assimilated him. The winner is Ultron. They really, really have to stop with the whole whoever takes their, you know, uses their superpower first is going to lose. I mean, thus far, it's really only had one exception, and that's Vegeta going Super Saiyan before Shadow goes Super Shadow. <laughs> wow. What a ripoff. They, they really have to stop doing that because it's it's such a spoiler basically because at that point the battle is pretty much over yeah. hey thanks for watching if you want the battle track from that fight you can click the link down below and get it off itunes and we still have a few limited edition 100 episode posters left so if you guys want to pick one up just click that box right over there okay okay give me uh, give me a good one give me a good one <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh, oh, that's gonna be funny. Actually, come to think of it, we haven't had a uh, Dragon Ball character um, since Mr. Satan, have we? That's been a really long time, but I thought like someone like Rillin or Piccolo would get it before Roshi did. And I don't know anything about Jiraiya other than he's also the perverted old master sort of character. You know, like Hapusai and all of them. Hapusai would be hilarious in a death battle, let's face it. And they're, you know, everyone would be team enough to kill him. <laughs> okay, well, so I was wrong, but I also felt like it was because they didn't fully explain it. And, you know, they're never going to fully explain it. But as far as getting it to the point, you know, giving us the relevant information... It's like, you know, I don't know, it's kind of like they're playing with us. And frankly, it's getting a little annoying. Give us the information we want. Oh, give us the information we need. Don't just decide that, oh, because we're going to use this as a linchpin, we're not going to tell them the specific part. It, on, people deal with it you know you know it, it's, it's just... and I know they say you know they gotta build the action and building the tension all the time by having you know the power-ups like that but when it's a when it freaking you, know, you can tell almost every single time who wins the match at that point I guess uh, shadow versus Mewtwo Shadow started transforming first, but he and Mewtwo finished at roughly the same time, because their like his transformation took longer, so Mewtwo was able to catch up and they were fully transformed at like the same time. This is like I keep expecting it to be this is I have my hand just right past my shoulder here. Anyway. Uh next time sounds interesting. Um I run up to the end of Z. And I don't know anything about, like, Super or Heroes or GT if they're going to use that. But since it's basically been retconned now, uh, uh, who knows? Uh, Evil Containment Wave isn't going to come into play. And either way, doing that would kill you, so it's just kind of... can destroy the moon. Basically with hardly any effort. I think it kind of knocked the wind out of him, but just for a moment. <coughs> Although I put it to you, the battle at the uh, Budokai Tenkaichi was in the middle of the day and the moon should not have been visible. 
<laughs> anyway, regardless. Uh, okay, so about this battle, like I said, um, uh, the sound was unbalanced, so I couldn't hear much of what was going on. Like, I could hear it some boomstick, but then when the characters started talking, it was like, yeah, yeah, what, huh, what, huh? You just I don't know what's going on. And, you know, I'm out here in the middle of, you know, the middle of everywhere. Uh, I just think I should go get some pizza after this. Okay, it doesn't show up, it says mod pizza. I know, I shouldn't. Oh, goodness. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna freaking upload this. I might just take this to work tomorrow when I upload it there. Oh, seriously, though, guys. Oh. If you have any any information that could help somebody in the Beaverton, Oregon, USA area get some internet that won't break the bank or make me go against my ethics, then that would be really, really swell. And frankly, I'd rather break the bank than break my ethics, because money cannot buy ethics. So, yeah, if you could just uh, let me know. And Death Battle people, if you're watching, please, 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 for the love of God, stop following.